Hi, welcome to the Gear Garage. My name is Zach. This is my little internet show about whitewater stuff. And in this episode, I want to share some video with you that shows kind of like a beginning to end how to handle a rap scene. And this is just an example that we have video we, we recorded for our online rowing school. We have a section in there about big picture scene safety. Uh, there's, a, there's a lecture about big picture scene safety. This is the example that goes with it. So this is an entire like how to handle a rap situation. This is more just so that you as like a class two, three boater, if you want to understand the nuts and bolts of what goes into some sort of like Z rig type rap rescue. There's a lot of little nuggets in this example. And so I'm really excited to share this with you. It's part of our online rowing course I've been working on for about a month now, about six weeks now actually. And it's pretty much done. It's like 85% done. If you want to buy it before it's done, uh, you can, you get 200 bucks off. It's a, the course will be 395, but if you use the uh, coupon code YouTube, is 200 bucks off to get the whole thing. But this is just one of the videos in the course I'm gonna share with you. And a lot of you that have experience or, or whatever, you, have, you may have thoughts, you may have things to add. But, um, so please add comments in the comment section as you watch. And please remember, this is not a how to deal with a rap start to finish. This is an example of what a scene might look like and sort of some of the things that we do as we get ropes out to a boat and kind of work through, through some sort of rap. So please don't use this as your like, how to undo a rap video. That's not what this is. This is just an example to create discussion and show some good visuals of what, a, what the big picture is when you're handling some kind of scene. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate big picture scene safety. The rescue techniques used in this video require training and practice by all members of the team. This is an example of a simulated rap rescue with a, using a three to one. Now, when there's a wrap, it doesn't always mean three to one. You can do a lot of other things first. Nick hopefully already pushed and pulled on the boat quite a bit and maybe dot tube deflation. And then we, we decided to go to ropes in this case. We sent an upstream spotter, downstream safety. We set somebody in charge. And Michael just checked in with Nick with the are you okay symbol. And Nick's okay so we know the scene is stable. Beautiful toss right into his hands. Well practiced. And one of the keys we're going to find throughout this is the rope has to be elevated above the water. That ha If it falls in the water, that drag will pull it out of somebody's hand. So it needs to be tied off and or elevated above the water. And what we realized here is that Nick doesn't, we're, we're probably going to set up some sort of rope system and Nick needs some webbing, something to do an anchor, a two point anchor onto the boat. And so we have to now get webbing over to Nick to do this. Now, if you have this on you, you can skip this step. Like if you have this in your, your PFD, for example, or somewhere tied in your boat, you can skip this step. But a lot of the time, the people on the boat don't have webbing. So it takes an extra few minutes to use a second throw bag to transfer the webbing over. And you can transfer over other things if you need to, like carabiners, maybe pulleys for certain systems. But this is how we can get gear over the boat. Once Nick has the webbing, he's going to want to tie his two-point self-equalizing anchor with that. But he does have a throw bag sitting in his boat uncoiled, which is a major hazard. We'll, he'll handle that in a little bit. But the first thing he needs to do is tie the, the rope somewhere on the boat so he has his hands free to either do the two-point anchor or do what he should do first, which is tie up his throw bag. So he's going to tie it off to his raft, probably use a bowl in here maybe, or tie a figure eight on a bite and attach that to a carabiner. So that his hands are free, he has to rigidly attach it. And this is just temporary so that the, the rope, he has his hands free and the rope doesn't go. And now Nick is tying a two-point anchor onto the boat. He's doing a water knot right now to complete the loop. And he's going to pull that in, put a twist to one of these, and he has a two-point self-equalizing anchor. This is important in case one of the D-rings fails. It also spreads the weight between the, the, the force between the two D-rings. Now he's attaching the rope to his two-point anchor. And this will allow us to pull, again, pull pretty hard on the raft if we need to, having the two-point anchor set up. Nick is tying a figure eight on a bite to the end of the rope. So now he can clip the rope into the carabiner on the two-point anchor. And 
Now Michael has something solid he can pull on without the fear of it breaking. And so he's going to do his best to pull. Step one is just pull, see what happens. Let's just pull. And now he's going to try different angles. That didn't work. Let me pull from a different angle. Let me go upstream. And it, he has to go through the bushes. This is pretty common. It's not easy to find other angles. But he's pulling. He probably feels a different sensation. Now, in this case, Michael's by himself. Typically, there's two or three people to help. So there's two or three people pulling. But it could just be one person. And that didn't work. He's going to keep trying angles. And while he's doing this, Nick could be pushing and pulling on the boat. He hopefully already did that before this started. You know, before you put a rope on a boat, you definitely want to try to have the person in the boat push and pull and try different things out. But once once that doesn't work, that's when the rope comes out. Again, now Nick's going to pull, or sorry, Michael's going to pull from another angle. And he's kind of realized maybe this is a good angle, but they want to change the point that they're attached to the boat. Right, so again, you're trying a lot of different things out. Pull from different angles, but also try a different attachment point. So Nick is untying his two-point anchor, going to the back of the boat, and he's going to retie his two-point anchor in the hopes that this different pulling from this different spot might have a different effect. And notice he tied the rope off to a D-ring in the boat, just so again it's above the water. If the rope catches the water, it's going to go away. And this is just a sort of a time-consuming process every time. But it's super valuable to, again, try a lot of different things out before you think about any kind of mechanical advantage. So it's worth taking the time to try different, different pulling angles. Here, Michael reminds Nick that he has a throw bag just loose in his boat. This is obviously a dangerous thing, and we need to take a second and just pack this throw bag. It's time consuming, but just having an empty rope in the boat is pretty dangerous. So it's worth taking the time to do this right. While Nick is putting in that throw bag away, Michael realizes we'll probably need some sort of anchor. So Michael grabs some tubular wedding being out of the safety kit. And behind him, he looks where he can anchor. There are some big rocks, but there's also a pretty decent sized stump. So he's going to choose to put an anchor around the stump with this tubular webbing. So the first thing he's going to do, he, there's different types of anchors he can do. He's going to choose the basket hitch. And so to do the basket hitch, he's going to tie a water knot first. You'll notice we're tying a lot of water knots here to make one big loop out of the webbing. The nice thing about the basket hitch is that it's pretty strong, but also it's not tied around something. So when you're done, you can just pull it off pretty easily. You don't have to worry about untying the knot at the end. Once you put loads on things, untying the knot can be quite a hassle. And in the real world, like again, when you find that angle, there's not always an exactly perfect place to do an anchor. This is a nice stump, but it's definitely a challenge to get through the bushes. This is a pretty typical thing. You have to kind of look behind you and get creative once you find that good angle as to, to where your anchor is going to be. Now, Nick's probably finished putting his throw bag away here. Uh, and, you know, we, we're not net, definitely going to use the anchor, but while we're taking the time, Michael's thinking ahead, putting the anchor down. Now, here Nick's, Nick had the rope tied off to the boat. You can see it catches the water a little bit there. You really don't want that. Once the Some of the times the rope can catch in the water and can pull out people's hands. He's going to take the rope and attach it to that two-point anchor. And again, we're trying something new. Let's try pulling from another angle and seeing how that works. And so here we're simulating pulling. If we pull too hard, the boat will obviously come off. This is, this is for practice. And we decide that that's the way to go, but that it's, it's close. It just needs some more power. So now we're going to switch over to a static line. Static lines are better for a lot of reasons. They're stronger, obviously but they have less elongation. That throw bag, when you pull on it, the first few feet you're just pulling out stretch in the rope instead of pulling on the boat itself. It's not as efficient. The, the static lines have less elongation, so when you pull on the, on the rope, most of that pull goes to the boat. And to get the static line over, it's just like what we did earlier. We pull it over, slowly raising it so it doesn't get caught in the water. And we could have sent the static line over earlier, right? We could have done that right away. It's an option, you know, 
maybe we didn't have it available to us right then. Maybe we didn't think we needed it. But this is how you're going to get the static line across. Nick's going to detach it from that throw bag and then attach it to that two-point anchor. And, and now there's another throw bag full of rope in the boat that Nick needs to coil up before we get too far ahead. Which So now he's we're taking the time. Michael's holding the rope above the water while Nick stuffs that throw bag because that throw bag is a potential danger. So with the static line, it'll you'll just find it pulls better. Your force goes right in the boat. We're attempting to pull. And we realize we're going to try some different things out with mechanical advantage and pulleys. The first thing to do while Michael holds the rope above the water is to attach a pulley to our fixed anchor to allow us to do just a redirect. This doesn't add any mechanical advantage, but allows us to pull from a different angle. And this is good to do because if we are pulling really hard and the a D ring, both the D-ring snap or something breaks, all of the hardware fires back towards the shore where you're pulling and can hurt hurt the people on shore. So it's kind of nice sometimes to do a redirect. Maybe we were pulling from a weird angle and we also want to pull from a different direction. Right now, maybe this pull angle, and here, you know, both pull angles are the same. Maybe we couldn't get good footing from the direction we were pulling before. And here we can get better footing. So we're going to try the same thing, pull from that angle and see if with that footing in that angle, we can get a better pull. From here, it's super easy to set up uh, a three to one. Michael's going to grab a pulley and a prusik and a carabiner. And he's just going to attach to the rope. And we, we're pretty set to set up the three to one system. And so he's going to go upstream of the rope. We want to be as careful as we can to always be on the upstream side of the rope. If you're downstream of the rope and the boat comes undone, that rope is going to hit you, maybe knock you over, maybe push you into the river. So it's, it's proper form to always try to be upstream of the rope. And here he is. He's taking a prussic loop and tying a prussic hitch to the rope. This allows us to, to attach to the rope at that point. And now he's going to take off a carabiner and attach a pulley. And so now the rope that we had, we can bring over. He's downstream of the rope now, but that's just to make this work well. It feels like things are stable. And then once we put the, the rope into this pulley, we now have a three to one system. So if this was if this is pulled in line with the pole, like I'm pulling up at an angle right now, but if it's pulled in line with the pole, it's a proper three to one. Now Michael's gonna add a progress capturing prusik. He's on the wrong side of the rope, so he's moving upstream. He was about to tie it and then realized, oh, I'm downstream of the rope. Let me go upstream of the rope. That's good for him. And this prusik allows us to pull on the rope and have it capture the progress. It's hard to explain. But this one's important so we can pull a little bit and then take a break. Pull a little bit and then take a break. And also, if we need to move the prusik further out on the rope, we can capture our progress and move the, the other prusik further out. So once Michael's done that, uh, we, have, we have a proper three to one. But we also want to do another redirect. This is one more step. What this does is allows the, the line I'm holding off in the bushes to pull in line with the rope, which makes it a proper three to one. That angle between the ropes right now removes some mechanical advantage or removes some of the advantage, but also keeps us out of the line of fire. If we're pulling in line with the boat and we're standing where Michael is right now pulling and something breaks, the hardware can fire back and hurt somebody. And this is actually a pretty dangerous thing and something we want to avoid. So by just simply adding a redirect, this pulley here doesn't add any mechanical advantage. It just changes the direction of the pull so that now everything is, all the ropes pulling are lined up. It's very efficient. And we're pulling from somewhere that keeps us safe. So here we go. We're pulling on it. We pull a little bit and the progress capture, press it captures the progress. We're pulling. She takes a lot of short pulls like this. 
And what we realize is that we're starting to pull the system in. I'm going to go downstream of the rope just because that's where I have to go to adjust the pulley. We're going to take the prusik there. And now that we have the, the progress captured, I'm going to move this prusik further out because the whole system is about to bind on itself. So I can just move the system a little further out and then we have more room to move. And now from this angle, we pull on it, pull, and you know, hopefully this pulls the boat off typically. It does, obviously this boat's barely stuck, so it pulls this one off pretty easily. Once the boat gets off, we wanna think a lot about, before it comes off, we actually we wanna think about where it's gonna end up. Don't just pull it off and then make it something worse. And so we pull it off, Michael then takes it on that rope, stays up, we're upstream of the ropes, pulls it to shore, and we're done. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, subscribe, hit the like button, leave comments. If you, again, if you have thoughts about it, I'd love to hear your comments, good or bad or, you know, questions. So leave comments in the comment section below and yeah, we'll see you in the next episode.